Father, your, your word says the entrance of your word gives illumination. Lord, I ask that we give illumination to every one of us today in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for unction of your spirit once again. Lord, I ask that only what you want said will be said in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And Lord, I ask once again that your word will have a free course in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, I ask that your word will work for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. So, um, I'm speaking on honoring the Lord with praise and worship. Honoring the Lord with praise and worship. I'm going to have the introduction. After that, I will have something projected on the wall. Then I will continue with the preaching. Um, from the passage we read, we saw the elders, we saw the angels all worshiping God because it's worthy of our praise and worship. Praise comes from the Latin word praesio, meaning price. Price, when you talk about price, you put price on something that has value. When you go to the store to buy something, you go with money. And then you say, what is the price? And when, when they tell you, oh, you say this $10, you look at it and say, okay, I don't know more. I don't know whether this one will last so then they say, oh, it's $200. Okay, this one must have a very high value, right? So, the word praise comes from the Latin word, which means price. Putting price on something. And a variety of it is also price. When you do very well in school, we have, you are, uh, students, you know, you have price given day. When you are Call your name is called, and uh, you, you, are, you are given a certificate to show that you have done very well in your studies. That is to say, you are appreciated. A price is put on the work you have done. Price, a variety of praise. And it means, originally, it means to set a great price on something. So when we are talking about praise, who are you praising? You are praising God. And you are praising God because you have set a high price on God. Because you have looked at God and say, this is God. And is worthy of my praise. He's worthy of my adoration. You put a value on God. And you put a price to say, oh, this is my God. This is my love. This is my treasure. This is the treasure of my life. This is, this is the bane that I treasure. And this is my first love. We love many things. But God demands that we love him first. And we love him totally. He does not take half of our love. Praise the Lord. And the word of the Lord also makes us to know that where your treasure is, that is where your heart is going to be. In other words, if it is God that you have treasure, your heart is going to continuously be with God. Because that is your treasure. That is the person that you treasure. You treasure. So God is your treasure. So And that is why we worship God. Because you are worshipping the being that you treasure. You are worshipping the thing, the, the, the God that is your first love. And that is why the Bible says we should love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our being. Because He is the person we are supposed to be treasuring. So in other words, we are saying that honoring the Lord with praise and worship. We can as well say treasuring the Lord with praise and worship. Because God is the one that you have come to love and to treasure. Uh, the word of God says, 1 Samuel 2, 30 says, I will honor those that honors me. 
at the beginning of the year, one of the things that God said to us, among many things, is that I will honor those that honor me. In other words, whatsoever you are going to do to honor God this year, we finished the first quarter, three months has gone. We still have nine months left. If you have not been honoring God, start honoring God. Now, this is just the second quarter. We have the third quarter, we have the fourth quarter. Honoring God. And when you honor God, He's going to honor you. We are going to see the way people that honor God through praise and worship, we are going to be seeing how the Lord honor them in return. But before that, let's watch. Thank you. 
The Lord said to the woman, stand up. She said, no, let me just be like this. The Lord said, stand up. She said, let me be like this. The Lord said to the angels, pull her up. Prosperity. Follow her. Honor. Follow her. Favor. Follow her. Wealth. Continue to endure. And then the third, the third thing, long suffering. Let her be able to suffer for a long time, but able to. And when they began to sing and to praise 
The Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies falling to the earth. And okay, the please, uh, please pause, pause for me, but don't go away. This was Jehoshaphat. Uh, there was battle, a lot of battles. Many people, different nations, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Syrahites, they all gather together to fight against Israel. And these were the people that God had told the Israelites not to, not to destroy when they were coming out of Egypt. But they decided they were destroying the Israelites. And then in the earlier part of the chapter, the Oshamites called upon the Lord, called the opposite of Judah, to call, call, for a, call for a fasting. They fasted with their children and with their little ones. And God gave a word of prophecy like we had today. God started speaking to them that, you know in this battle, you are not going to fight. The only thing you are going to do is to start praising me. Look at how crazy that can be. How can God tell you to be praising when they are machine guns, the arrows, and um, chariot of war? You know, but that was God's command because that was the prerequisite for God to act. That was the prerequisite for God to do the impossible. And it was on the battlefield. And so the children of Israel, they started singing. They started praising God. Look at verse 22. It says, when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, when they begin to sing and to praise, and the Lord set ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Messiah. So the ambush did not start, start uh, until they started praising God. The ambush did not start until they started worshipping God. So when they started that, God decided to do, to do it by himself and for himself alone. God decided to do the impossible. God decided to fight for the Israelites when they started praising God. You know, a lot of the battles of our lives, we really don't have to fight. But when we take over the battle, when we learn the hype of honoring God with our praise and worship, when the presence of God is with you, who can stand against you? Who can be against you? Because the presence of God works with people that worship. The presence of God goes with people that praise God. The presence of God goes, he said, I inhabit the praises of my people. In other words, immediately you begin to worship, God comes down. That is God inhabiting your praises. That is the dwelling place of, place of God. God sits in the midst of praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And mind you, I like where God is. Because when God comes down, it is happen. Like here, all those people that started, that came out to fight the Israelites, the Bible made us to know that Amos and Moab, they got together. They said, hey, you know, we are, we are, we are more related than, this, than Seah. Are the inhabitants are the descendants of Saul of um, Jacob and Esau, a descendant of Esau. So they are like, ah, we are, we are closer. So they band up and they fought the the the, the, seer, the seers. The Bible made us to know that when those ones, when they were dead, completely dead, Amos and the Moabites they talked to each other and they started fighting. The Israelites, they were not doing any fighting. So that is where I like to be. Where God is doing the miraculous. So that was the first thing. God came down. 
and started doing the fight. So praise and worship is a weapon of war. It's a weapon of war. It's a weapon of warfare. So when you are experiencing warfare, when you are experiencing terrible things that you might not even be able to say to anybody, resort into praise and worship. And God that inhabits the praises of his people will, will come down and do the battle for you Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible made us to know that everything started when they were singing. Father, uh, Father Israel, go ahead. 25. Okay. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in the garden of the spoil. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barakam. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka until this day. Okay, hold on, Father Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were not expecting. These were the people that were fasting. It's like the fasting that God will deliver them. Israel, Israel was small compared to all the nations that gathered around there. It's like we are talking about Ukraine and Russia. If Ukraine is small, we all know that. It's the same thing. The Israelites, they were small. But the, 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 the nations that gathered against them, they were more. So they were not even asking for riches. They were like, God, just let me be alive. Let my children not die. So they, but you know what God did? He had dead wealth to it. What we have just read. Because, you know, that's why I say I like when God comes down. Because now, he fought the battle for them. He added to them wealth in gold and silver. Let's continue. Father Israel. Okay. Then, they, then they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Praise the Lord. The Lord made them to rejoice over their enemies. Uh, uh, thank you, Father Israel. 28. So they came to Jerusalem with stringed instruments and harp and trumpets to the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was from all the kingdom of those countries. When they heard that the Lord had fought for Israel, uh, for against the enemies of Israel, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when the presence of God has come down, He does the impossible. He does the miraculous. So in this particular case, He fought all their battles for them. He gave them riches, and then, then He prevented further war. Because now that the other nations that will have wanted to fight against Israel, now when they have heard all that God did, that they say, you know, they didn't fight though. The enemies were killing themselves by themselves and for themselves. All those ones, they will not stand up to fight anymore. So God prevented future war. So all these things he did because he inhabits the places of his people. And look, look at something. From the beginning we said, it is God that will treasure, that you will worship. It's because you treasure God. It's because you love God with all of your heart. That is where praises and worship come from. It comes from within your, within, from inside of you. For the scripture says, out of you will flow rivers of living water. Praise and worship, they are part of what rivers of living water flowing from inside of you to God. At this time, it is you flowing to God. And when rain, when there is evaporation, and water is evaporated into the cloud, what comes down? A lot of rain comes down. So when you are praising God and, 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 your, and your praise and worship has evaporated to God, 
at the end of the day, it will become flood, it will become rain, it will come down, it will rain down, it will become a flood, and there will be flood as the Lord lives it. There will be flood of God Amen. in your life. Amen. There will be flood of God in this assembly. Amen. There will be flood of God in on every aspect of our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When God comes down, in that, in that, um, that we watch, God said, ah, not only honor is going with this place, with this woman, not only prosperity is going with her, even me, I'm going to go, go with her. My presence will go with her. And this one that is worshiping like this, I'm happy the presence of my people. That is the place I can be comfortably. I cannot be in the place of complain and complain and complain. By the way, what wasted the life of the Israelites in the wilderness? It was it's not, what they saw. Listen, what they saw is not like they were not happening. It was true there was no water. It was true there was no food at the point. So all the things they saw, it's not like they were not true. They were true. So, but God, they, they, see, they were still wasted because of complaining and grumbling against God. So, it's not a question of, eh, 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 it's because it's not there. It was, they were there. The problems were there. And so, it shows that we, in our generation, we do not have excuses. Even though we have challenges, the place of the place before God is not that of grumbling and complaining like the Israelites. It's the place of going in the presence of God. God, when you get to you tell God, tell God that Mr. David just said that when you, when you worship God, He comes down. And let's see whether it's not, it's not going to come down. And tell God that according to your word. I heard that uh, in the book of Psalms, they said you inhabit the places of your people, and that when you come down, you do the amazing things. So you tell God that God, I heard that today, and see whether God is going to do amazing things in your life or not. Because the scripture cannot be broken. The, the scripture stands sure. And because the scripture stands sure, it will work, the word of God will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God honors his people when they honor him through worship, through praise and worship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to see another unusual place where God came to. God goes in, into different places. Whether it's, whether it's a place we like or it's a place we didn't like. As long as there is praise worship there. God decided to go to the prison this time. Let's see. Let's look at Acts, Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. And we are looking at Acts 16. We are looking at 25 to 31. Please read for me. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great air. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's one. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Praise the Lord. This and it was the prison God decided to go to. Because that was where there was prayer and then there was hymns. So, as the five said, but at, but at the midnight, at that time, Paul and uh, Silas, they were preaching. And because they started to touch the untouchable, there was this woman, a slave girl, who was a sorcerer, whatever, he was possessed. she was possessed. 
And because she was possessed, she started helping uh, the devil by saying that Paul and Silas, they were the ministers of God. Even they were the ministers of God, but it was, she was using the spirit of divination. And Paul decided to send the, the demons to the uh, away. And then there was an opera. Before they knew it, they landed in busy. And because they knew what to do, instead of complaining and grumbling, God, maybe you know that you are here. We were here to do your work. And where were you? By the time you they were taking us into prison, did you actually sleep or were you not there? And you were proclaiming your name. And hey, what happened and what happened? They did not do that. What were they doing? The Bible made us to know that at midnight, they were praying and singing hymns. That's what they were doing. And because they were doing that, look at it though. They were not in a party, oh, it was in a prison. You know? That's why they don't even know what there was going to happen to them. They didn't even know whether they were going to kill them. But at that point, all that they did was that they were praising God. And because they were praising God, God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. God decided to come down. And as usual, when God comes down, what happens? The miraculous starts to take place. First, let's look at what happened first. When God decided to come down, suddenly, 26, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison was shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's chain were loosened. So in the first, all the prisoners, prisoners, they were set free. If they had wanted to run away, they would be gone completely. Uh -huh. The doors were opened. All the prison doors of our lives, the Lord opens them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. There was an earthquake. So all of them, they were all terrified. Mm -hmm. God decided to terrify the terrifiers. Mm -hmm. They were terrified, terrifying Paul and Silas. God terrified them with earthquake. Mm -hmm. The Almighty God will terrify all our terrifiers in Jesus' name. Amen. God terrified them. That was the first thing. Letting them know that you think you have power. And the God, the Almighty. Verse 27. And the keepers of the prison are waking from sleep and see the prison door open, supposing the prisoner had fled, drew sword and was about to kill himself. So he did not kill himself. Verse 30. And he brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? That's why there was no preaching anymore. He got saved compulsorily. And he, he got saved totally because he told us that like they must have been preaching. Because now he did not even say, please, well, he just what should I do to be saved? And he was he was saved, and the Bible made us to know that he brought them to his house, his household too was saved. That was another miracle. God terrified the terrifiers, God made sure that the people the, the, the people were born again, and then then there was a there, there was a change of power. Then when the God terrified the magistrates, and then they said, hmm, you know what happened? In the night, hey, the, all, the, all, the, all the people in power, they heard about it. And then they said, let them go, let them go, let them go quickly, let them go quickly. And Paul, being Paul, said, we are not running anywhere. You brought us here uncondemned. And you want us to go secretly, you are going nowhere. Come and take us out yourself so that everybody will see that you are the one taking us out. Because God, they knew the weapon to use. They used the weapon of praise and worship. And there was a change of power. The power changed and God put the power in the hand of Paul. And when they came, they actually came to take them out. And that is when they left. Praise the Lord. For the Bible made us that it is because they started at the midnight. Paul and Silas they were praying, they were singing hymns. They were not grumbling and mourning. As and pra praising God and worshiping God is a way of honoring God. It's a way of treasuring God. It's a way of saying you are my first love. It's a way of saying you are the only one I love. It's a way of just going before God and saying, there is no other one like you. You are the only one I'm going to obey. 
You are like God was talking to us this morning. That are we actually ready to go with Him? Do we actually believe the word of God? Do we keep running and running and running and running and do not sanctify the Lord in our hearts? We have to sanctify the Lord in our heart. We have to honor the Lord. We have to follow His word. That is what he, he came to, he, he, Jesus Christ died for. And part of sanctifying the Lord in our heart is really loving God. And it is when we love God that we can actually be, uh, go with Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, God, honor Solomon. You know, we have talked about God, God going to the battlefield. We talk about God going to the prison. This time, God went to church. Let's look at uh, Second Chronicles 5, 11 to 14. At this point, um, I'm going to summarize. Um, Solomon was the one dedicating the temple. And he was dedicating the temple. He was dedicating the temple. The Bible made us to know that he called the children of the Levites, the choir, in fact, there was they was they, they they had quiet clothes. So maybe that's where choir attire came from. The Bible made us know verse eleven that priests first the priests sanctified themselves in the area of the dedication. Verse eleven says the priests sanctified themselves before they come to the presence of the Lord. In other words, I want to say God does not expect us to live in unrighteousness. God does not expect us to live in sin. God does not expect us to do whatever we like by ourselves. If we declare that we belong to God, if we be declare that we have given our life to the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to live according to the word of God. Uh, praise the Lord. So, verse 12 made us to know that the Levites, um, that second Chronicle five, uh, uh, chapter five, verses eleven to fourteen, make us to know that the Levites and their children, the little ones, all of them, they wore attire, they wore white, they were in the presence of God, they were ministering. That is verse twelve. So in other words, God expects the children to be part of our worship team. And um, and God expects the children to worship with us in our families. Verse 13. Verse 13 also brought something out. That the trumpeters and the singers, they have one note. In other words, they practice properly. They, they, they brought out something good. It's not like the trumpeter was going in this direction and the singer was going in another direction. Singers were going in another direction. No. If you look at verse 13, it, it says the trumpeter and the singers were singing as one. And they were in harmony. And they were saying, For God, God is good, for his mercies endure forever. After that, in verse 14, 14 or 13, what happened? The Bible made us to know that the cloud of glory came down. God came down in front of their midst. There was actual cloud. There was physical cloud. Because God physically came down into their midst. And it's because of the worship and the praise. It was not even because of the prayer. It was because of praise and worship. God came down. The Bible made us know that the priest could not minister because of the presence of the Lord. The glory of God actually came down. God himself came down because he dwells in the praises of his people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible made us know the priest could not minister. They could not do the rituals. They could not do all that they were supposed to be doing. Because God had come to take over. The issue is this. When God came, comes down because of praise and worship, He comes down to take over. He takes over from you. He takes over from you. God takes over from you. So all your sins and all that, it, it stays. God actually, actually takes over. So at this point, God came down. All the priests and all the things they were doing and they could do, they could not do it anymore. Because God had come to take over. The Almighty God will take over the issues of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. So as it is, if you read the whole of chapter 6 of Second Chronicle, you will see 
all the prayers that Solomon prayed in the dedication of the temple, there was no area that was not covered. He actually prayed. But chapter seven, uh, chapter 7 gave us an insight of what happened because of God coming down. Chapter 7, verses 1 to 3. If you are there, please read. Now, when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is God, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. So God wanted um, Solomon to know that he has had his prayer. So, fire physically came down to consume the sacrifice that they were offering to God. So, God had, just to let you know, that all the many prayers that Solomon prayed, God had all of them one by one. So, in the middle of praise and worship, all the prayers you will pray, all the prayers you have prayed before, God will answer all of them one by one. Because he, 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 he said, I, I have the presence of my people. God actually comes down. God actually comes to stay. Praise the Lord. And the Bible made us to know that the Israelites, they praise the Lord. They, they, were, they, they, they know God. They were happy because God answered all their prayer. And because they saw fire coming down from heaven. God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise the Lord. And then, the last. Acts chapter 13. God also came into the church at this time. Acts 13. 1 to 4. If you are there, please just read. Now, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and, si and Simeon that that was called Niger, and Lu Lucius of Cyrene, and Manaean, which had been brought with Aaron the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord, and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Praise the Lord. So, even the mission, mission, of evangelization of the world was born in the midst of praise and worship. The Bible made us to know as they were ministering, verse 2, as they were ministering to the Lord. Meaning when ministering to the Lord means praise and worship. That is the only way to minister to the Lord. When you are praying, you are ministering to yourself. But when you are when you are worshiping, you are ministering to God. So he said, as they as they minister to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, now separate unto me, Barnabas. So the mission of evangelization of the world was born during praise and worship. God came down, made his mind new unto, unto him. So the challenge that we have is honoring God, treasuring God, treasuring God in our hearts, loving God wholeheartedly. Can you say, sincerely before God, that you actually love God wholeheartedly. Can you say that God is your first love? Can you say that you actually treasure God in your heart? And that's what God was calling for earlier in the day, to say, if I come today, are you even going to go with me? And in the first place, if you are not born again, you know you cannot even go with God. Because the Bible says, without, uh, without um, God, no one will, without repentance, no one will see God. He will not even see God. So it is really important that if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the next thing you are going to be doing. You have God. All you need to do is, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I cannot save myself. I, can, I didn't die for myself. You died for me. And I believe what you have done come into my heart. And sincerely made up your mind to follow God. It's not a question of, uh, I will repent today. 
will, I will sing to you, I will repent when I finish uh, singing. Like somebody said, when I was in elementary school, he said I will kill somebody, then I will go to church to confess my sins. That one was one. Why went one in the elementary school? I was like, how do you kill somebody first and then you go and repent? But that's the way, even we Christians do, many times. We will say, we will sin, God will forgive us. That's not the type of life that God is asking us. It's the one when we say, God, I actually give my life to you, and I'm following you with the whole of my heart. Um, so this morning, the most important thing, make up your mind that you are not going to be a complainer like the Israelites, so that long suffering will not go with you, <laughs> and, uh, and patience, and endurance, me, I don't want to endure anything. Me, I want prosperity to follow me and honor and glory. And then more importantly, I want his presence. Because when God is present, he does different things. The things that you cannot even imagine, he takes over from you. And I think we want to pray different kind of prayer this morning. God, take over my battle. Every challenges of my life, you can start to pray. Every challenges of my life, take take them over. I will be a worshiper. I will be a worshiper. I will not be a complainer. You can start to speak to God. That as from today, I will not be a complainer. It's not like God does not say you should come and tell you what is bothering him. But to, to tell him as a father, as your child will tell you when something is bothering him or her, not as a complainer. Not like, uh, I'm, I'm tired of God. No, don't be tired of God. How can you be tired of God? Who, you, um, to whom shall you go? Even if you say you are tired of God, um, to whom will you go? You are, you, God is the one that has the word of life. Where else will you go? There is no where else for you to go. You cannot go to the devil. The devil does not have anything good for you. And so, you cannot choose to go to the devil. I want you to pray, God, I come before you. I don't want to be a complainer anymore. Second, um, second um, quarter of year 2022, I'm making a resolution. I'm, I'm, it's not even a resolution, but I'm making up my mind that I want to, I want to praise you. I want to worship you because your praising you brings down the presence of God. I want, and I want you to take over the battles of my life. I want you to take over my challenges. I want you to begin to pray. It is important that you respond to God. When God is speaking, you respond. When God is speaking, you don't keep quiet. Like my pastors usually say, that spiritual things are very slippery. Don't let the word of God slip out of your life. I want you to say to God, God, I'm here. I will be a worshiper. I will give you praise so that as you will come down into my life, you will take over the battles and everyday challenges of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I want you to pray. Yeah, like we have been challenged this morning. If you know that you are not living right with God, I need you to repent. God needs you to repent. Because the challenge is if Jesus Christ will come today, if Jesus Christ will come now, are you ready to go with him? And we must be ready all the time. Because Jesus Christ will not announce to us when he's coming. He said, I'm coming soon. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according as his work will be. According to your work, so he will reward you. The reward is even one side. Are you even are you are you even prepared? Are you even ready to go with him? No. Uh, first, before we think about your world, world, I want you to speak to God. Everything and anything that will not make me to be rapturable, everything and anything that will not make me to go with you, take it out of my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, everything and, and anything that will not make me to be ready to, to go with you, go take it out of my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and I want you to pray every challenges of my life. I turn them over to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every heavy weight that are weighing you down, I want you to turn it over to God. Bodies are lifted at Calvary. It is at Calvary. Oh, the word of God says, cast your care upon me, for I care for you. 
I want you to cast your care upon God because God actually cares. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And peradventure, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't want to be ashamed of it. You want to signify. You want to raise your hand to God to say, Jesus, I want to give my life to you. You can raise your hand to God while I pray with you. You will sincerely want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can raise those hands to God. Because God is giving you another opportunity to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is appointed unto man to, uh, to die. Uh, to, 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 uh, it is appointed unto man to die only once. And after that, there will be judgment. But we are not to be judged because we have this opportunity. When you give your life to the Lord Jesus, you escape judgment. You are actually going to glory. The Almighty God will help us. Uh, Father, Lord God Almighty, want to say thank you for today. Thank you for all the prayers that your people have prayed. Thank you because they have been received as a via, as uh, as uh, as as um, perfume unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for another day. We give you praise and we worship you. Let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.